incredible taste. Sitting down to play the Ninth Symphony in a concert is probably one of the most exciting things. The anticipation. I feel like I'm, you know, on the start of a huge epic journey, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's a monumental piece. At, right at the beginning you have this empty fifth, which isn't, you're not in D minor yet, you're on A, so it's, it's uncertain and it makes your spine tingle. Um, I love the first movement. I, I adore it. I don't know if he had any religious conviction or not, but, but it certainly was to do with that absolute truth that he saw in the music. And, and I think that's what, what came across very much in the rehearsals as well, you know, not just the concerts, that, that he, was, he, was, he was trying to do Beethoven as much justice as justice as he could. I've always had a huge soft spot for, uh, for Macaris, um, partly because we're both Australian and I have that. I connect with him in the way in which he's very, he's very open and he's very direct. And I suppose um, listening to it, knowing that it's who it is and that was us, <laughs> makes me think just how much control Charles Sir Charles had over us all, you know, he, I mean, it, it was absolute master of, of conducting and, and directing the orchestra. He had a great sense of humour. Philippa Brownsword, our, our orchestral manager, tells a wonderful story that quite often she would wait for him to go on stage, wait with him at, at the door before he went on stage. And he always asked her, even in, the, in his 80s, he always asked her, how does my hair look? And she would say, it looks absolutely wonderful. And he said, well, it's all my own, you know. <laughs>